Alrighty, you guys know what time it is. It is finally time to get back into the tier list. Everybody loves tier list, okay? You guys have been asking for this one for such a long time. Like, you have been spamming my suggestion form, okay? So fine, here you guys go. You got happy now? Bruh, I'm sorry the camera angle keeps changing nowadays, but like, I'm trying to find one that I like, and I think this one's okay, but let me know what you guys think. I don't know what the best camera angle is. This webcam is weird. But without further ado, let us get into the video. Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we are finally going to be doing the physics tier list that all of you guys have been asking for. And the reason why I chose to do physics first is because physics is my true love. Don't tell Yusuko that. Bessie would start crying, and I just don't want to hurt her feelings, okay? But... Physics, that's where it's at. So you guys know the drill, we're just gonna go through all these resources and I'm gonna talk about them and I'm gonna rank them, we'll see how it goes. But one last thing before we get into the actual ranking, please make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps me out a ton. You guys have been liking and subscribing, I really really appreciate it, you guys are amazing, but if you haven't already, please do. And also remember, the Patreon is now live. I will be posting weekly live solves there, so if you guys are interested in my live solves, you guys are hardcore Karara fans, please join. I would really appreciate it. You guys get direct access to me, you guys can suggest whatever the heck you want, you guys get exclusive content, and if you're a higher tier Patreon, I'll even do some one-on-one -on -one calls with you if you guys want. I'd be happy to, like, help you guys out with whatever you guys want. Of course, like, maybe don't, like, come to me with, like, basic physics questions, but, like, anything. Anything you guys want, just go ahead and ask me, and we can set up a call if you guys are Patreon. <laughs> It's not Patreon. I keep saying Patreon, but literally Patreon. Patron? Patron. There we go. We know how to English. Holy moly, that took a while. But yeah, make sure to become a patron if you guys are interested. But that's all I got from the plugging nonsense. So let us get into the actual video, okay? That's what the fun stuff is. Okay, so to start off our tier list, we got Morin, okay? And basically Morin is a physics professor at Harvard, and he makes some very, very good books. Now, a common problem that a lot of textbooks fall into when you're studying for EFMA is that the textbook problems are just not hard enough, right? Like, textbook problems are nothing compared to EFMA problems. You could take AP Physics 1, and like do all the problems and get a 5 on the AP exam but you might get wrecked by AFMA, okay? Is it Moran? I don't even know. I'm just gonna say Morin but if I'm wrong you guys can roast me in the comments for it. But basically Morin made these two very epic mechanics books and they're both college level and their questions are pretty close to AFMA level. The one on the left is called Morin Blue and the one on the right is called Morin Red. I wonder why. <laughs> But basically, they come with a ton of really good problems, even though they're not a great way to learn, like, the, the concept, right? You're probably gonna get wrecked if you try to learn physics for the first time from there. You still get a lot of practice for ESMA, so if you're ever looking for practice problems, those are really good. So, I, I think I'm actually gonna put it, like, at either pretty good or epicness. Bro, why did I put everything behind? Hold up. So, as I was saying before I got roasted by my trolliness, I'm gonna put this somewhere in between, like, pretty good and epicness, one of the two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I made you way too big. But you know what? I'm gonna put it like somewhere on the epicness here, okay? It's definitely there. Bro, <laughs> bro, I must be making you guys really angry if you guys have OCD. Holy moly. Dude, literally before I started the video, I literally purposely made this a little bit less organized so that you guys won't get too triggered at me when I like messed up the tier list. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna like talk about other classes later because like you can't do other without, without talking about the ones the normal ones are, right? <laughs> so we'll go to Kevin S. Huang next, okay? And Kevin S. Huang is my boy, okay? This guy literally posts EFMA solutions for every single EFMA that's ever come out. It's so good. And his solutions are really, really good, okay? He explains them way better than, like, the official EFMA solutions, and he sometimes comes up with his own solutions, which are really, really good. So that's right here, this website. You can see all the EFMA solutions are there. Like, you can click on a random one. You can click on problem, I don't know, problem 25, because that's probably the hardest one. No, it wasn't this error propagation, god dang it. <laughs> But as you can see, he explained it really nicely. I personally think they're more readable than the actual solutions. He also has a lot of other stuff. He's a pretty cool guy. I haven't really, like, looked into him, and I haven't really read any of his other books. But his EFMA solutions are amazing. If you guys want to check him out, just make sure to check him out. I will put links in the description for all of these guys. So I'm going to say he's pretty good. Like, I mean, solutions are only useful if you already know the stuff and you're, like, really, like, really stuck on the harder ones. Because for the easier ones, like, the EFMA solutions on the official thing are pretty okay. Alright, now we are on to online courses, and by online courses, I mean like Coursera, MIT, Courseware, like, I don't know, any any of those kind of things. Khan Academy, I'm putting in a separate category because I actually found it really helpful, but for online courses, what's kind of weird is that I didn't really find any really nice physics courses online that I really liked. When I was in 8th grade, I kind of wanted to learn physics just to see how it was and see whether I was interested in it, and I tried to look for one on Coursera, and I found nothing, dude. I found this AP prep one, and it was so boring, it was like, they, they didn't even explain that well, I don't know. I, I couldn't find anything. And even on MIT Courseware, there was one course, there were handouts and stuff, but there weren't any, like, video lectures, which I'm sure that's what you guys are looking for in an online course, so I'm not sure if that works either. So, I'm gonna say not, like, not worth it, because, like, I couldn't really find any really good ones. But if you guys do know any good online courses for physics, 
please let me know down in the comments so I can actually put it in my description because I personally want to know what some good online physics courses are because I I'm pretty sure a lot of people will find that helpful. Also, another reason why online courses are not that helpful is because without the videos, you might as well just use the textbook, right? Like, the only reason you would want an online course is if you have, like, a fun professor that teaches you it in a really interesting way, right? Okay, past exams. Now, past exams, like, I'm gonna say are very useful, but they're not, like, super great. Like, yeah, obviously, if you want to study for an exam, you gotta take past exams to prepare for it, right? So, I mean, there's not much to say about this. You just go on the website, you find a practice exam, then you take it. I only took all of the past exams when I was preparing for FMA the first time, so definitely do with them, but like, I'm not gonna say they're super good. Pretty good is fine. Okay, nothing too special about exams and solutions. All right, now we got to Khan Academy. I know a lot of people like Rose Khan Academy for not being very good for Olympiad stuff, but Khan Academy is really good for learning stuff, right? And I think a lot of the people who do FMA first have to learn the very basic concepts of physics on their own because if you wait till your high school teaches it to you, you're probably too late already. Like I know a ton of people who took AP Physics and then try to take FMA, but you, you just don't learn enough from AP Physics 1 and like in our school, you have to take it in junior year. So you just don't have time to prepare for it. So the great thing about Khan Academy is that it lets you learn it on your own really well. And I think nobody even comes close to Khan Academy when it comes to like problems, when it comes to videos, when it comes to like I don't know, like quizzes, I don't know, they have everything, dude. So if you're just starting out and you're interested in Physics Olympiad and you just want to like learn the basics, which is really important by the way, don't just jump into doing F of Problem because you're going to get wrecked, learn the concepts first through Khan Academy. They have really good videos, you'll learn it a lot better than if you just try to do it on your own. So I'm going to put an epicness behind it because like yes, it's not like really good for those of you who are trying to get to like, I don't know, Physics Cam, but it's really really good for getting started. Alright, now for Giangoli, okay? By the way, I did not use Morin that much myself or Khan Academy myself, but Giangoli is how I first learned physics, okay? Basically, when I wanted to learn physics, I literally just went to Giangoli, read through the chapters, worked through the problems, and it was really helpful. It also happened that Giangoli was the physics textbook my school uses too, so I happened to read that beforehand before taking the class, so that was nice. Like, basically, Giangoli is the physics textbook that everybody uses to learn, like, high school level physics. The only problem with Giangoli, of course, is that it's pretty basic, right? You're just learning high school level, it doesn't use calculus, it doesn't, like actually like teach you that much and the problems are not even close to FMA level but if you're getting started it's really good okay so I recommend learning it I'm not gonna say it's like super good there's nothing special about it it's just a textbook but it is good for starting off I'll say pretty good all right another textbook physics for scientists and engineers by Surway and Jewett basically the way I improved at physics was I had this tutor guy okay there's like this local tutor around the bay area who like teaches all the smart kids how to do physics right and honestly I think that was a really bad idea for me like I wasted a ton of money on his Yusufo class and I didn't even take Yusufo that year that that kind of sucked and honestly speaking he didn't even add that much value right he just took a bunch of problems from textbooks he just told us which problems to work on he just like copied his notes from the textbook kind of so it was really not worth it if you have the discipline to do it on your own but he happened to use this very textbook, okay? He used this physics for scientists and engineers, and it has so many good problems. Like, I kept wondering how this tutoring dude came up with so many good FMA level questions, and it turned out when I searched them up online, they were actually coming from this book. Obviously, the only problem with it is that it does have, like, calculus-based stuff, so if you guys know calculus, I would definitely recommend looking at this book and, like, learning physics from it. But of course, if you don't know calculus, feel free to just look at the book and do all the non-calculus parts. It'll work very well. So I'm going to say it's epicness. Like, maybe not as epic as Khan Academy. Like, it does another sort of problems, but it has a ton of really good problems. Honestly, like, huh. Well, it's kind of like Morin in that sense. I don't know. <laughs> to be fair, I'll just say Khan Academy and this are, like, approximately equal. But they're both epicness. Very good books. Okay, Halliday and Resnick is kind of in the same boat as physics for scientists and engineers, but it kind of serves the same uh, purpose as Giancoli for me at least. Like basically what I did is the summer before sophomore year, I learned calculus, right? And I didn't know how to use any calculus for physics. I knew a little bit of basic physics, right? But I didn't know how to apply calculus to it. So then really what I did is I basically like got Halliday and Resnick and I just looked through the chapters and just went through the calculus parts to learn how, to, how those worked. When I actually went through the problem, they weren't like stellar, right? They weren't like super FMA style or Yusufo style or super interesting or anything, but I learned most of my calc physics from there, so it's a really good resource if you just want to learn calc physics. I'm gonna put it right above Giankly because it does have calculus, so calculus is better than no calculus. Bruh, <laughs> why did that guy want to rotate so bad? Okay. Also, a lot of you guys have been asking me whether I recommend learning calculus for uh, F equals MA. No, not for F equals MA because you could do most of the problems without calculus, but of course, calculus helps on F equals MA. If you know it, you could solve problems without actually knowing clever manipulations, like for moment of inertia and stuff. But if you do use of O, you definitely have to know calc, okay? You can't do use of O without calc. Okay, now we are on to Everraise. And Everraise is basically run by one of my friends, and <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Like, 
they basically give you free Olympiad level like training. It's crazy. And the teachers have actually done the Olympiad and they're actually like done pretty well in the Olympiad. So you're basically getting like free tutoring from really good people. I, 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 it's like an amazing deal. Like they have notes, they have lectures, they have like mock contests. They're crazy for like a completely free thing. Of course, both of the resources I put out there are like free resources, but Everbase is a summer program that's free, taught by really good people, and it's Olympiad focused, okay? And on top of it, it has lectures and stuff to keep you engaged. So, I mean, it's just a win-win situation. It's definitely at the top of my list. Like, if you want to learn physics, I would definitely would apply to Everrays. I guess the one bad thing about Everrays is that it does have limited spots, right? So you might not get it. And like, I don't know how long they're planning on doing it and whether they're going to keep it free. But from what I know, like the past two years were amazing. So if you guys are interested in physics, make sure to check them out. Okay, art of problem solving. Now, I personally have not taken any art of problem physics classes, but that being said, I think... AOPS in general is really good, right? And I've heard from a lot of people that Physics Loop, for example, helped them a ton with Yusufo, right? And I've heard that the Physics Ethma class, just like any of the AMC classes from AOPS, helped them out a bit too. But the only problem is that everything else on the Swift is free, dude, and AOPS courses cost money. So what is the point? What, like, I don't know. There's so many ways to learn physics without using an AOPS course, so I feel like the ESMA courses aren't necessary. But if you guys are going to spend money, I think AOPS is the best place to do it. So I'm going to put it out pretty good, okay? Alright, now we finally got other classes. That's basically any course that's not AOPS, right? Alpha Star you got, you got like your private tutors, I don't know what else there is. There's like a ton of really random competitive physics places nearby in the Bay Area, so any of those guys. And basically what I would say is don't do them, okay? Like, they're a waste of money. I think that there's a lot of ways to self-study physics. Um, if you guys need any help, you guys can always DM me on Discord. And I know this is really, really hypocritical of me because the main way I learned physics was literally through this tutor guy, right? But I hated the class. The, the, the guy was really, like, kind of boring. He kind of made me, like, really not like physics that much. But when I studied it on my own and I did problems and I, like, took the actual Olympiad, I, I enjoyed that, okay? So I would recommend looking at all the other resources first. If you, like, Think that you're the professor nearby to you or like whatever the tutor that you want to use is like really good then sure maybe go ahead and do it but i think you could do this for a lot less money and with like a lot better results all right well that is my tier list i hope it helped you guys out if you guys have any changes you guys want to the tier list let me know in the comments i know not everybody would agree with this tier list and it's obviously not like the definitive tier list but this is what i think is how the resources should be ordered and Honestly, like, if you take anything from the top two tiers, you should be in good shape. But let me know. If you guys have any other questions in the comments, if you guys have any other suggestions or anything, let me know down in the comments. But other than that, that's all I got for you guys today. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you guys for watching again, and I will see you next time.